Welcome to the Titan Firefly Wi-Fi tutorial. Today we're going to go over the new Titan Firefly Wi-Fi unit, what its capabilities are, how to use single and multiple units, and other cool things you can do with the system. So let's get started. First, let's download the application from the Apple Store or Google Play Store by typing in Titan Firefly. You'll need internet connection for this as well as logging into the application. So let's just tap on download. I've downloaded this in the past, therefore it's just going to be saved to the cloud. And we'll open the application. Great! So the first thing you're going to want to do is allow Firefly to send you notifications. This is important for us to make sure that everybody is always informed about the newest updates. So we'll press allow here and select country. Select the country you're using the system in. I'm in the United States right now, so I will go down to the United States. And press OK. Accept the terms of service. After that, we will go through all of our safety warnings. These warnings are provided by the American Pyrotechnics Association as well as the National Fireworks Association. So this will see this here. You will not need to enter gender or date of birth if you do not want to. Just press sign up. Firefly will ask you if you want to use Bluetooth. You can press OK. This does not mean you will need to use Bluetooth. Awesome. Let's go ahead and grab a Firefly Plus, Mini, or Upgraded Unit. Depending where you've purchased or upgraded from, your unit will come with our proprietary igniters. You will either have our Titan Multi-Clip, or Firefly Connectors. Batteries do not come with our system, so I highly suggest you use a rechargeable power plate. You can also use Duracell branded D copper top batteries. I have a power plate here, so I'll be installing that for the time being. When you're using the power plate, make sure that you turn this power setting on. If you're using the power plate for the first time, please charge them overnight prior to installation. The power plate uses lithium ion batteries. We chose this over lithium polymer based on its resilience against heat and cold and longevity. We'll come back to the battery later on in this video. Great, everything is ready. You signed into the application already and installed batteries into the system. Your system will come with our regular antenna. That will give you about ranges of 100 to 150 meters or more. That's 300 feet or above in freedom units or football field of range. Now, if you want more range, you can always pick up a range boosting antenna. It will give you over 200 to 250 meters or 600 feet of range. So that's about two football fields. Let's screw that on now. When you're using the antenna, you want to always make sure that it is pointed upwards, not sideways, as the antenna signal travels out in a horizontal fashion. If you bend it, the antenna signal will move into the ground. So you always want to keep it straight. You're ready to connect. Turn on your Firefly and let us do this internal control check. The system has a fault different lights will light up. After the system finishes its internal check, the front of the Firefly will have a light below the power button. Firefly users in different regions will have different variations of this, but the steps are the same. If you see a red light, you are in primary mode. Primary mode is the correct mode to be in for your first unit. If you see a blue light or a red-blue light, 
please tap on the button below the power button to change the mode setting until you get to the red light. Blue lights are secondary or mesh mode, and a blue-red means you are in firmware update mode. More on that later. Okay, now that the red light is on, your primary Firefly is now acting as a Wi-Fi hotspot. This means you are connecting directly with your Firefly using its own Wi-Fi. You do not need your own Wi-Fi signal to connect to it, so it doesn't matter where you are. It can be a field or out on a remote island. You will be able to connect to the Firefly. Now go to your mobile device. You can use Apple or Android. I'm using an iPad Pro for this demonstration. Go into your device's Wi-Fi settings and find Titan Fire. If you do not see Titan Fire in your Wi-Fi list and your Firefly system is turned on, you can either refresh your Wi-Fi list by turning your Wi-Fi settings on or off. Turning the Firefly on and off or by manually typing in the network. The network name will be Titan Fire with a password of 6688666. Eight, eight. Sometimes, the first connection may take as long as half a minute. This is because our Firefly Wi-Fi does not provide internet, and it may confuse some operating systems. If you see a prompt from your mobile device that tells you that this Wi-Fi does not provide internet connection, this is normal, and just acknowledge the prompt and continue. If you're using a device with mobile data, you may want to turn on airplane mode to make sure your system does not automatically hop into mobile data to compensate for the lack of internet. Turning on airplay mode will also help to extend the range of the unit. Now that you've connected, let's go into the Firefly application. Open up the Firefly application, pressing firing device, and you will be presented with two choices, Firefly Plus or Firefly Classic. Please tap on Firefly Plus to connect. The Firefly would like to access the camera to import shows in the future, so press OK. Now, if you are sure you have connected to the Titan Fire Wi-Fi and the system does not respond, just back out of this screen and re-enter to try again. Each session of Firefly has a unique code that it sends to the firing device for security reasons. you are now at the main screen. If you look towards the upper right hand side of the application, you will find a settings tab. Tap that to show your Firefly units. The name of the unit, the color code, the Wi-Fi settings, the firmware date, and the battery level will be shown here. You can change the name of your Firefly device by tapping on GT2404-A0 and naming it whatever you want. This goes for the color code and the Wi-Fi settings. However, I do not suggest you change the Wi-Fi settings unless you really need to. If you have more than one Firefly, please connect all devices before changing any settings to make sure the entire network received the change. The battery level will have three colors, green, yellow, and red. A green battery indicator means that the battery level is healthy and the system is receiving at least 12.6 volts. A yellow battery indicator means the system is receiving at least 9.6 volts. Our system only requires 9.6 volts, so if your battery is charged or new and you only see yellow, you are still receiving full functionality. A red battery means the system is receiving less than 9.6 volts and the performance will suffer. This can mean low or no ignition. The system may reboot when attempting to fire and it may limit the range. If you see a red battery indicator with new batteries, tap on the refresh button found here. This will refresh the network and system settings and get you a fresh reading. This refresh button also works if you are not seeing all systems in your network.
All right, let's hop into manual fire by pressing the manual fire button. The system should show you each cue's continuity pretty quickly. If you do not see it respond quickly, you can back out and press manual fire again. We will be adding a refresh button directly onto the manual fire screen in the near future. To fire a cue, you can just tap the cue to select it, look to a lower right hand corner, swipe from left to right to arm, and tap again to fire. In some screens, you may need to swipe downwards to see the arm and fire buttons on smaller mobile devices. If you want to select a product from the catalog, tap on the magnifying glass and select a product from the list. This is not a requirement for manual fire. Show Design is aimed at teaching the basics of how to use the Show Design feature, as well as features that even seasoned Firefly users may not know about. Tap on Show Design and you will be presented with this screen. Find the music selector near the center of the control bar and tap on that to import music. Tap on the plus icon in the upper right hand corner. Your music will need to be in MP3 format to do this. If you're using an Android device, this step is much easier as the application will open your mobile device's entire memory to find your music. If you are using an iOS device like we are here, the application will open the Musics app to find music. The only songs you will see in the Music app on iOS and in Android will be songs you have purchased or downloaded. You are able to import three MP3 files into our Firefly application which will then be stitched together in the Firefly app. If you're using an Android device and using Google Drive, you will need to download that song onto your local cache. We are working on alternative import methods for iOS. If you want more than three songs, I suggest you use a free music editing program such as Audacity to do so. If you want to delete a song, you can do so by swiping left on the song name and a red button will appear. This is the delete button. You can then press the delete button to remove the song or just continue swiping left for the same result. You can import the same song three times if you need to. Once you are happy with the song choices, press OK to import the song into the Firefly Show Designer. This step can take a minute or two if you're importing a large MP3 file. The Firefly application is currently being worked on to allow for no song importation to use Show Design. Now it is time to pin cues. There are actually three ways to pin cues onto the song. The easiest way is to press the play button in the control bar and press the plus button to pin cues wherever you want a firework to ignite. Complete this step first. Do not add products into the cues yet. You can remove cues in the reverse sequence you have added them by using the minus button in the control bar. The second way to pin cues will be to directly tap where you want the firework to ignite in the song by using your finger and tapping on the screen. You can drag the cue left to right by tapping and holding the bulb on the cue and dragging it from left to right. You can also delete the cue by tapping and holding the bulb and swiping upwards. This method will still add cues in the sequence of 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now say you do not want to add cues in sequence. In the control bar, you will see a 1, 2, 3 on the left side of the control bar. Tap that to show all cues. 
you will notice that if the queue has continuity, you will see the queue number underlined in green. Tap the queue number you would like to add and use the drag and drop method to place the queue at your desired time. You can also remove all cues from the song using the red clear all button. You can combine all three methods of adding and removing cues. And you can add non-sequence cues. Drag and move it to, onto the song. Delete it by swiping up. Pressing back to show the control bar. Pressing plus or minus for the same effect. It all depends on how you want to design. You can move the song back and forth by dragging your finger on the song from left or right. Now, let's add products to your cues. This is not necessary. You can use zero fuse time. You will tap on the right hand side of the screen if you are using a smaller mobile device to show cues. On tablets, it will be just below the wave file. Tap on the right side of the cue bar to show products available. You can use the magnifying glass to type in product names to search by name. If you do not see your product in our catalog, please just use our zero fuse time product for the time being and move it back by three or four seconds to compensate for firing time. We will be allowing user generated products very soon. Most firing systems require you to import your own fuse time and effect times. On our cue bar, you will see gray or green to show continuity. The cue number, the product in that cue, how long the product is expected to last or what is known as effect time and where the product should fire or what is known as the expected time. Swipe down to show the rest of the cues. All cues are automatically set to zero fuse time when you pin them. You can also rename the show at the top of the screen by pressing the pen and paper button. Once you are finished, press the save button and back if you are not ready to fire yet. If you are ready, press Finish Editing. Finish Editing will send your show to the device while simultaneously saving the show to your mobile device memory cache. Depending on how far you are from the device, sending your show can take less than one second or up to 30 seconds. If the show fails to send, Exit the application and try again. If you want a countdown timer of 15 or 30 seconds and will add 15 or 30 seconds of empty time to the show to allow you extra time to move away from the show area. If you do not need a countdown timer, swipe from left to right to arm just as you did in manual fire. The system is live now. Please use all necessary precautions and only arm if you are ready to fire. Press fire and the show has begun. You can stop the show at any time using the emergency stop button. This will send a show kill command to all units. This cannot stop any already lit fireworks and you will not be able to restart the show. Only use this command if you need to stop the show entirely. Once the show is finished, back out of the show design screen to the main screen. Congratulations, you have finished with show design. Now what if you have more than one unit? Let's start from the beginning. We will skip some single unit steps. If you are not sure of how to use a single unit, Please do not move on to multi-unit tutorials. I have two Firefly upgraded units here. Turn the first one on, and now the second one. Continue turning on however many units you have. Select one unit to be your primary, and leave it aside. Your first unit will be your primary unit and the Wi-Fi hub. Take all other units and tap on the center button underneath the power button once. This should change the light from red to blue. 
Once the system is blue, it will automatically system check itself once again and remain blue. If you see the light remain red or move to red and blue, press the center button until it remains blue. After this step, you should have only one unit as primary red and the rest as secondary blue. Go into your mobile device and connect to Titan Fire again with the password of 6688 6688. If you're using the same mobile device, your system should automatically connect to the system's Wi Fi. Move into the application until you get to the settings screen. You should see all units displayed here. If you do not, Press the refresh button until you do. Do not rapidly tap the refresh button and let the system refresh the network settings. Rename the units as you wish by tapping on the name of the individual unit. If you want to change the Wi-Fi settings, this is when you would do so. If you have changed your Wi-Fi settings prior to this, any new unit will not show up as it is looking for Titan Fire with a password of 6688. 6688. If you're adding additional units to the network, place that unit in primary mode, log in, and change the Wi Fi settings to reflect the new network settings. Set it back to secondary and it should show up. Move into manual fire and you will see all units show up from left to right. Each unit will report to the application at a slightly different time. As we did in single unit, if there is a unit that is not reporting back, back out and press manual fire again. This process should only take one to five seconds. The steps to select and fire are the same as in single unit, except now you're able to select multiple queues in multiple units. If you want to select an entire row, please tap the row number to select all. Do not tap on the individual queues in that row. The commands are sent out differently. As much as possible, do not select multiple units with different queues as there is a possibility that the unit does not receive commands. The reason for this is that the doorway for commands is a certain size. If you use an entire row command to fire, the command will be row one all fire. If you try to separate the commands, the application will send unit one fire one, unit two fire two, unit three fire three. A single command has just been split into three. That can be overwhelming at that millisecond. If you need to fire in rapid succession, please use show design or swipe and fire. Arm and fire just as you did in single unit mode. You can also add products just as you did in single unit mode. Let's move on to show design. The setup is the same as single unit with the caveat that now you can pin queues to multiple units. You select the unit by tapping on the unit on top and viewing all queues by tapping on all devices. Just like in manual fire, if you do not see all your units respond with the correct continuity, back out and move back in. We will be adding refresh buttons to assist in this process. When you pull up your show from the main screen, please give it a minute for all the information of the units to populate into the application. If you attempt to finish edit right after you pull up a show, the application may try to inform you that several queues are not connected. Just like in single unit show design, you can design while listening to a song or just by tapping the screen at the position you would like to have the firework to go off. Select your product in the same way you would like single unit 
select your product in the same way you would in single unit and finish the edit once you are done. Please always test your show prior to show date. I cannot stress this enough. Always test your units and shows prior to show date. Always. You can do this by not adding any fuse to your coils and just watch them light up. Now that we are in the topic of testing, let's talk about two different cables that you can use with a Firefly device. Here we have our Firefly clip. It is pretty straightforward on how to use, but we have some instances of smaller fuse. If this is the case, what I would do is layer the top of the Firefly clip with some paper to increase pressure on the fuse to the coil. Make sure it is snug and that the fuse is fully entered into the clip itself. And that way, even smaller fuse will fit. Like that. Make sure it's snug and that the fuse is fully entered into the clip itself. Snug, fits all the way in. Now, onto the Titan Multi-Clip. The Multi-Clip was designed with professionals and regular consumers in mind, with reinforced rubber and metal. The fuse placement is very similar. It is very rare to find a fuse small enough to require extra paper to increase pressure. You can see that the rubber here has been reinforced for that exact reason. Now the side ports are meant for electronic firing with talons or e-match. I have some talons here to show you how to insert wires. I usually fold the wire over to increase the surface area. Each multi-clip will be able to handle 4 talons and 7 to 10 e-matches. As I said before, please test all components before show day. You will notice that the multi-clip will not show continuity breaks if you are using talons or e-matches because the internal coil will be creating continuity. If you want to have consistent continuity reporting, you will need to break the internal coil. Our multi-clip is also removable, making our wires reversible. Moving back to the Firefly unit. Our systems are firmware upgradable, which means I may periodically release firmware updates to ensure that the system runs as smoothly as possible. This is done by taking and turning the Firefly on and changing from primary or secondary mode to firmware update mode. Firmware update mode is shown with a red and blue light. Next, you will need a Wi-Fi network or mobile hotspot that has been named Titan Update with the password of TITAN UPDATE in all capitals. You can find your unit's firmware version from the settings area of the application. If you are unsure on how to change your mobile hotspot from your phone or tablet to TITAN UPDATE, please look in the description below for links. If your Firefly begins blinking, it means the system update has failed, and you should turn the Firefly off and on to try again. You can also change your home Wi-Fi to Titan Update with the password of Titan Update temporarily. The Firefly will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network, Titan Update, and update itself. Once finished, your Firefly will automatically restart itself in primary mode. Now on to some cool things you can do with the Firefly. Unlike Bluetooth, Wi-Fi allows us to have a backup mobile device. This means that during a show, you can still activate manual fire. So just in case you want to fire something in advance, or refire something that did not ignite, 
you can activate any cue at any time during any show with any other mobile device. Let me show you. My iPad is currently about to run a show. My Samsung here is connected with manual fire. Let's start the show on my iPad and I'll ignite fuses randomly. You do not need to worry about overwhelming the system if you have our power plate or Duracell batteries with good battery life. So green or yellow battery indicators, please. Our system has advanced its power management systems to cater to these use cases. Also, if you would like to extend range with multiple devices, each device acts as a repeating device. So if you have one device with a regular antenna with one football field of range, two devices with double that, and three devices with triple that. A good way to show or see your connectivity would be to look at your Wi-Fi signal bar. Don't worry, we will be adding signal testers in the application soon. Thank you for sitting through the Wi-Fi long form tutorial. I'm sure we will be adding and updating this tutorial as time progresses. Please let me know what you think in the comments.